then we're going to look into how to use the new calibration program. So I'm just going to open up one of my folders where I've already took some images using Canvas or Firefly. As you can see, they come in images sets of three, and I only want one set of images for the single camera calibration. So right now, I'm going to have to split these images up. And to do that, I'm going to use OpenView, the program right up there. And it has this batch conversion um, ability, which we're going to get to use. So first thing we need to do is make sure that we are going to break part of the right image. Part of the image. So we're going to set this exposition to zero, which means the leftmost image. And as you can see, it's 640 by 480. And then we are going to set the name. This part doesn't matter what it is. I just like to name them as left. And then we are going to make sure we're going to output to the correct folder. So there, I am going to select uh, inside my left folder, actually, I've created a subset right up there. But I also wanted to actually create inside the subset a folder to output into because it'll be easy to select later. So I'm just going to call this cut right now. And from there, I can just select the cut folder, and that will be my output. So now I need to select which ones I'm going to input into the program. So just click on the add all in your folder and then click start batch and it will convert all the images. So just return to batch. And then now we're going to need to do the same thing for the right set of images. Same thing, I already, already gathered these images. I already have a subset of those images already made. I'm going to add all of them and put the proper name for them. And also, this time it's going to be 1280 because it's 640 times 2 for the rightmost image. And make sure the output folder is correct. So, here the right subset cut folder isn't created yet, but it will make it automatically for us. So, we don't have to deal with actually manually making that folder. We just click start batch again, and it will just go through and create all these folders for us, uh, images for us. Right, so if we just look there, we can see that all the images are created correctly and they're cut very nicely so that the calibration program can just identify each of these checkerboards by themselves. Next, oh, as you can see, I've already actually done this for the stereo camera images, which means you have to have the checkerboards identifiable in both the leftmost and rightmost cameras, and I've already broken them up. And the only difference here is that you use the same set of images for the left and right. And you have to have the image corresponding to each other correctly. So now we can go straight into calibration. So here you can see we're going to actually display the checkerboards first. And this is just so you can see that how it's working. Usually you don't want to do this because it takes more time. So you want to do mono calibration. Select the output folder, which I already have created right there. And then you go into the correct folder here for your left set of images. For your left camera non stereo in mono calibration. I'm going to subset and I just have the cut images. I'm just going to press Control A to get all of them and open. And then this is for the middle camera, which I'm not calibrating, so just click cancel. And right now I'm not doing the right one. I'm going to click cancel again. And you can see the checkerboard pattern. And you can see how the which markers are identified. So we're going to go through this. The reason why you don't want to do this usually is because it takes a very long time to manually press enter throughout the entire thing. But it is very helpful. For, especially for debugging. But now we won't do all of those. So this will usually take a, a little bit of time, especially if you have around 100 images, which is what I'm using. You really only need about 30 to 40, which is almost instantaneous. But I use sets around 400 images, which can take up to an hour because the algorithm is exponential. But right now, it shouldn't take that long to run. And <clears throat> if the checkerboard pattern is ever missed, or that, <clears throat> there's actually an error that will show up telling you that it's missed, but it's not a big deal. It'll just skip over that. And as long as you have around 30 images, it'll always be fine. Alright, so that finished now.
And if we actually go into the output folder, we can see that left tower is now there. And look inside, we have camera matrix and different matrix. Now, we can re run the program. This time, we're not going to look at the checkerboard. We're going to run mono calibration again, select the same output folder. We're not going to do left calibration. We're not doing middle, but this time we need to do our right calibration. So we just go to the right folder, select all of them, and open. And again, it'll just automatically run. And as I said, this actually won't have a problem, but we'll see later that we will miss a few of these images. The checkerboards won't be found, but that's fine. Well, the program knows what to do, it'll just skip over them. And towards the end, you'll see there's actually an error output. And this just means how far off the, some of the image sets were. And you pretty much want that less than 0.3 is a good range. Usually 0.2 is a very good range to be in. But uh, you can get, anyway, I've had values that are really bad, so make sure that it stays toward the lower end. All right, so now that's done, you can see the error output of 0.2, which is very good, but now we're going to run stereo calibration now. So one thing is you have to make sure your output folder is the same output folder, so it has your left and right mono calibrations in there, because the stereo calibration needs this. Now we're just going to go to our images that I've already broken apart earlier, so you don't have to do this yourself. And these images have to be the same for the left and so the left and right have to be gathered together and the segue will return the set of images of three and you want to make sure you grab the same left and right for each one and they match between them. Left and right. So I just grab the left images, I'm gonna get the right ones now. And this subset is very small so it should run very quickly. So as you can see four of the checkerboards weren't found. We have an error of 0 0.26, which is not amazing, but it's not terrible. So you just press enter to quit, and now you're done. So you have all your calibration files for right calibration, and you can see they're right there. And you can read these right back in to using this and see these. So there is your stereo calibration. You can see that our baseline, the distance between our cameras is around 2, 2.8, which is actually very accurate. And we have also stereo rectification, which is very helpful for rectifying your images. Alright, so that's that's it. Pretty easy to use.